Sing, Amen, Amen, rejoice, Amen, Amen, glory be to God, Amen, Amen, 
sing. Amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing. Amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again. Let the people sing, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again. Let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen. Let the people sing, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Hey there, if you're watching this this morning, it, it must be that we don't have services because of the weather. They've been predicting snow. But I want to remind you that if you want to keep up with things, if there's any changes in our services, we'll try to let you know on Facebook or through text messaging or through the calling tree. If you're not signed up for our calling tree or the text messaging, be sure to do that. We would love to be able to keep you up to date what's going on. This morning, we're going to continue that series of lessons that we've been doing on redeeming the time. So let's do a recap. In Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 17, Jesus said, redeem the time. Why? Because the days are evil. And then he went on to say, so that we can do the will of the Lord. God intends for us to keep up with his work. And how do we redeem the time? How, we've been looking at the life of Jesus. We've been looking at what he's did to help us manage our time better. In other words, use him as an, our, our example. Because we've established, even though in the life of the first century was dramatically different than ours is today, Jesus had to deal with human limitations just as we do. He had people pulling at him in a million different directions. He had to figure out what was the most important. And so he had to deal with that problem. So far we've explored three timeless time management principles lived out by the life of Jesus. Principle number one, just simply start with the word. Go to the Bible. Find your answers in the Bible. Number two, let your yes be yes. You know, we talked about those open loops in our lives where we make a commitment and we don't follow through and how that is damaging to us both on our reputation and also psychologically. Yet, your yes be, yet let your yes be yes. Principle number three, descend from the kingdom of noise. There's so much noise, so many distractions. This week we're going to look at how nobody in Jerusalem had any more com things competing for his attention than Jesus did. And yet Jesus always seemed to be able to discern the essential from the noise. I mean, how could he say no to a multitude of people who came to him for healing? He had the power to restore all creation. So how did he decide on what was the most important? I want you to start today by looking, if you have your Bible, Mark chapter 1, 29 through 38. Let's read that together. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in the bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and the demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Early every morning, while he was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else. 
to the nearby village so that I could preach there also. This is why I have come. So to recap, after driving out some evil spirits at the synagogue, Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law and a bunch of Peter's neighbors. Understandably, the town residents wanted more of what Jesus was giving. They wanted that the next day. But Jesus said no. Why? Because he had already committed his time to a bigger yes. Listen again to the response of the people's request for more time. Let us go somewhere else to a nearby village so that I can preach there also. This is why I have come. Jesus understood his purpose and that allowed him to take a long list of things he could do and prioritize it down to the things that he knew he should do to finish the work that his father had sent him to do. John chapter 17 and verse 4. Once he had his work prioritized, Jesus focused relentlessly. So how do we, that relate to us today? So many of us get paralyzed with trying to decide where to spend the, the best use of our time. We are inundated with options. Most of them are good things. They're not necessarily bad things. They, they, they could be really good things, but we need to concentrate on the best. I read a quote that said this, really stood out to me. It said, the people on this planet who end up doing nothing are those who never realize they couldn't do everything. Man, that's good. Yet again, Jesus' example leads us to the timeless principle, biblical principle for redeeming our time today. Here's principle number four in our study. Prioritize your yeses. To redeem our time in the model of our Redeemer, we must decide what matters most and allow those choices to prioritize our commitments. In fact, not all yeses are created equally. Not every to-do carries equal weight in doing good works for others. So how can we, like Jesus, identify the works that matter most and ignore everything else? Well, first, we saw last week we must create space for silent reflection. But solitude isn't everything. It isn't enough. We must also grasp the truth that you and I have the power to choose what matters most rather than allowing it to choose for us. You know, a lot of people would, can make those choices for you. A lot of activities can choose that for you. Let's face it, most people operate on the assumption that the opposite is true. Most people are reactive rather than proactive with their time and with their priorities. You know, it seems like prioritizing our to-do list doesn't have a lot to do with Jesus. But when reading the Gospels, it's obvious that he was crystal clear on which works were most important. And because of that, he was able to prioritize the limited time, the precious time that he had here on this earth. And why did Jesus have to prioritize his, his time? I mean, he's God, right? He is the God became flesh and dwell among us. He, he could heal everyone in one full sweep if he wanted to. He laid down his divine prerogatives so that he could be that perfect sacrifice. But that leads us to our fifth time management principle in our series. Accept your unipresence. To redeem our time as the model of our Redeemer, we, we must accept our unipresence and focus on one important thing at a time. When omnipresent God became flesh, Jesus embraced the human limitations of being unipresent. In other words, when Jesus took on flesh and dwelt among us, he no longer could be omnipresent all over at one time. So he had to limit himself. Whereas God is omnipresent everywhere all the time, just like us, Jesus couldn't be in two places at the same time because he had laid down that divine prerogative. He was unipresent. Jesus had to deal with many of the same challenges we face today as we seek to redeem our time, including frequent dis distractions that competed for his attention. Now, we talked about a few things last week, but here's, here's just a reminder of a couple of things that, that came up in Jesus' life. A man literally threw himself at Jesus' feet as he was walking down the road in Mark chapter 10 and verse 17. 
A woman touched his cloak, distracting Jesus with the knowledge that he had healed her. In Mark chapter 5, 27 through 30. One time a man literally dropped through the roof over Jesus' head as Jesus was preaching. Can you imagine that? Luke chapter 5, 17 through 20. There are times Jesus welcomed these distractions, but other times Jesus made significant effort to eliminate distractions and cultivate depth. One of my favorite examples comes in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, 46 through 50. Here's what it says. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brother stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to him, who is my mother? And who is my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here is my mother and my brothers. For whoso, whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Now, given the main point of the passage in Jesus' word about who is and who isn't his family, it's not easy. It, it can be easy to, to miss the, the fascinating side story in this, the B story in this. Jesus is working, talking to the crowd, doing the work that the Father had sent him to do, namely preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and, and what was to come. All of a sudden, his family shows up. They're, they're waiting outside. They want to see him. Jesus ignores them. When Jesus told his family was waiting, he didn't say, you know, well, that's it, folks. I guess it's time to go. My family's out there. You know how God is. God first, family second, work third. Uh, so I, listen, I'll see you guys later. No, he continued teaching. In that moment, he was called to work and he remained fully focused on the present with the task that was at hand. Conversely, when, we, when, when he was with his family and friends, though, the opposite was true. When he was with his family and friends, he was fully focused on them in those times. In Mark chapter 9 is a good example of that. Jesus was coming off a hard day at work with his disciples. Mark 9, 31 through 30 says, they left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where he was because he was teaching his disciples. Once his work was done here, Jesus was intentional about being fully focused on his 12 closest friends and getting them ready for the task at hand. So to summarize where we've been so far in this series, we have five timeless time management principles that Jesus modeled for us. Let's look at them. Principle number one, start with the word of God. Number two, let your yes be yes. Number three, descent from the kingdom of noise. Principle number four, prioritize your yeses. And principle number five, accept your unipresence. Now, I'm not going to pretend that this is easy. It's hard to prioritize. It's hard to focus on what's important when we have so many things coming at us from so many different directions. And that's why I want to again emphasize Jesus offers us peace before we can do anything else. We don't have to do any of these practices to be completely and perfectly loved by God. And you need to understand that. But it's because of that love that he wants to re us to redeem our time, to make the best use of our time so that we can spend more time doing the will of our Lord. Would you bow with me? Father in heaven, we praise your name. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that you've given us here on this earth. We thank you for the many opportunities that you give our way. Father, help us as your people, to redeem our time. For it is so precious to finish the work that you've called us to do. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. And amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea
It is well.